On this channel, I've compared various majors before. However, I've never walked through an entire undergrad curriculum with you guys and shown the similarities, differences, and what you will not see if you take one major over the other. In this video, I'm gonna do that for electrical engineering, computer engineering, and computer science to clear up exactly how they differ in terms of college courses. Before I start, what you're gonna notice is how much these two majors have in common, as well as these two. But you'll also see that electrical engineering and computer science have very little in common when it comes to undergrad. The curricula I will go through will be from my college, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, because I'm very familiar with those classes, but note every university is a little bit different. Lastly, I've talked about so many of these classes in other videos if you want more specific detail, but here I'm just gonna go into brief explanations to save time. So let's just get into it. Here we're gonna start with the electrical engineering curriculum. If you've not seen a college curriculum before, don't feel overwhelmed or try to look ahead. I'm gonna walk us through all of this. As you can see, it's broken up into freshman year, sophomore year, then junior year, then senior. You also note that I was on a quarter system, as I had a fall quarter, then switched to a totally new set of classes for winter quarter, and then did the same for spring quarter. The fourth quarter, by the way, was summer, which was optional for people looking to get ahead. But many schools are on a semester schedule, so they take more classes in a given semester, but those last longer. On the bottom in green here are the general ed courses like English, psychology, history, and so on, which I will not be talking about. In the orange looking color here, you got your support classes like math, physics, chemistry, and the yellow ones are your actual major classes. So for the support classes, you start with calculus one, then two, then three. Then for some reason you have calculus four down here as well as linear analysis, but the order of these two did not matter. And linear analysis was the name for our linear algebra and differential equations class. It involved a little of both, but was called linear analysis. Most schools just have calculus one through three, but my school being on a quarter system had four. Information was no different though. Then we had to take one chemistry class you can see right here, which I really did not use that much. So if you don't like chem, you should still be fine in this major. Then there were three physics classes covering all the basics from high school physics, but in a little more detail, plus they involved calculus. Then we also had to take a modern physics course, which was mostly quantum physics or the study of particles, atoms, photons, and things like that. The only majors at our school that had to take this were physics majors, electrical engineers, and computer engineers. The reason we had to is because of our first electronics class right here in our third year. In that class, we learned about the transistor, that circuit component that allows our phones and computers to work. But before analyzing circuits with them, we had to learn how they work, like how the electrons would behave in the semiconductor which involved quantum physics. This was also probably the only time I did a good amount of chemistry in an EE class, but that only lasted a few weeks. Then you'll also notice we had to take a Fundamentals of Computer Science course, which was learning how to program from the beginning. I literally had no idea how to program before that, and by the end we had to program a Sudoku solver which took several weeks to complete. Now that class right there, at least for my school, was the one major class that electrical engineers and computer science majors had in common. That's it, not counting math or physics classes of course. There was a little more overlap in terms of material you learn in each major, but in terms of classes, that's it. Mostly everything else you're going to see here is not taken by computer scientists. Now on to the major classes. It really started here with circuit analysis 1, which was just about resistor circuits. Then circuit analysis 2 added capacitors and inductors. Then circuit analysis 3 was all AC circuits where we had to use imaginary numbers to analyze phase offsets and things like that. That third course was also the first one where I had never seen any of the material beforehand. I had learned a little about resistors, capacitors, and inductors before those other two though. Then also to begin my sophomore year, we had digital design. This is where I first learned binary, like how to count in binary, what truth tables were, making circuits that simply flipped ones and zeros, and more. Computer scientists do learn lots of this as well. That's what I meant when I said there is some overlap, but they did not take this class. Then that computer design class was just a continuation and is where I learned something called assembly language and actually designed a CPU. Then there was continuous time signals, aka the signals class, and this was a very math intensive course, learning things like Fourier analysis and how to represent functions as a sum of sine and cosine functions. This basically allowed us to think of and model signals in a different way, which was needed for let's say filtering techniques when you want to remove noise from a messy signal. And then I'm going to go a little out of order real quick, but we had our first electronics class learning about how a transistor works and how current flows into and out of the terminals. Next came digital electronics where we focused solely on transistor circuits that turned high voltages into low ones or vice versa, aka turned ones into zeros and zeros into ones, which is really what is happening within your computer. 
And then at the end of our third year, we took this programmable logic course, which is where programming, circuits, and electronics came together. We used an Arduino and had to do lots of projects with it. Examples were like making an LCD say something, all the way to calibrating a sensor for a real-world project. One from my class was someone used a weight sensor to tell when more dog food should be added to a bowl, and then a latch was opened that released just the right amount of food. Now so far I've discussed the three circuit analysis classes, digital and then computer design, continuous time signals, electronics and digital electronics, and that programmable logic course. These are the nine major classes at my school that electrical engineers and computer engineers shared. The remaining eight major classes that I'm going to go through real quick for EE, you would not see if you went into computer engineering. First is this energy conversion class, which is really power engineering. This is about high voltage circuits, electric motors, generators, and more of that. If you want to work for an electric company or on solar panels and generating lots of electric power, this would be something you'd be interested in. Then discrete time signals is just more signal analysis, but where the signals are discrete and sampled in time rather than continuous. Again, it's very math intensive, but a different kind of math, and it's very important for things like digital signal processing and using techniques to enhance digital images as an example. Control systems was about analyzing systems with feedback, whether it be a simple cruise control, all the way to control systems for a spacecraft to stay on course. Although we didn't see many applications in this class as we were just doing math and analyzing graphs. Intro to communications was all about learning AM and FM radio waves, how to represent them mathematically, why radio stations are spaced as far apart as they are, and so on. Then analog electronics is about circuits that could amplify an alternating voltage using transistors. And electronic design was really fun but tough to explain. It was mainly about circuits involving something called an op-amp or operational amplifier. That lab was a 10-week project where we made a lux meter or something that measures light in a room. This combined a lot of information from many of our previous courses. Now before moving on, you see that we require to take at least three technical electives here. This is where you can pick from a long list of electives that are in a specific area of electrical engineering you want to focus on, which I'll pull up here. So if you like communications and those signals classes, you could take fiber optic communications or digital signal processing or maybe antenna design and so on. If you liked electronics, you got options here. Then for everyone saying they don't want to miss out on computer engineering classes, you have options here. You can take computer vision, real-time operating systems, and more that are listed in that department. Then going back, you see how the curriculum has these required engineering support classes? These are a little different where you can pick from a wide range of disciplines outside your major. You could take some extra math classes, or maybe some mechanical engineering classes, or even more computer science and engineering options. You could even take a mixture of a few things. And I'm saying this to everyone who's thinking, I don't want to miss out on whatever classes if I pick this major instead of that one. Because you have flexibility and can honestly almost get a double major if you do everything right. Plus, some schools offer electrical and computer engineering dual degrees because of how similar they are. Now with that said, let's move on to computer science. First, they take these three programming courses. The first one is what electrical engineers take as well. In the second one, at my school at least, they learn Java, and then in the following they apply their programming knowledge to lots of projects. As an example, my friend made a Boggle word checker and a game similar to Solitaire but more simple that I'm not going to explain. Then real quick, these classes that are elongated across multiple quarters are not actually that long. They're only one quarter but are recommended to be taken at some point where they're placed. So then they jump into discrete structures, which is their discrete math course going over proofs, graph theory, logic, and more, which is huge for algorithm design for computer scientists. MIT has great lectures for this class on YouTube and all you need is Calc 1 as a prereq. Systems programming is the class everyone at our school dreaded taking because of how much work it was. You learn a lot more about C as a programming language and become a much more skilled programmer. One project my friend did was program a compression algorithm that would reduce the number of bits or ones and zeros that made up a word or string of words. Computer architecture is more in-depth study of the hardware design of a central processing unit. It's really more of a computer engineering topic because it is hardware oriented. And then they have operating systems which they take some time in their third or fourth year. Again, I went out of order because these eight classes I just went over are the ones that computer scientists and computer engineers share. The other six classes, not including electives, you will not see or at least not be required to take as a computer engineer. Of those, one big class for computer scientists is this design and analysis of algorithms, where they use that discrete math to prove and model algorithms for various purposes. 
Examples would be like the traveling salesperson finding the shortest route if you had to go to multiple cities, or the convex hole telling us the smallest polygon that can enclose a set of points, which has applications in pattern recognition, image processing, and more. These courses on programming languages are quite technical, but the information about them can be read here. And my friend said in that class for a lab, he basically made a programming language from scratch. And then theory of computation is more about how efficiently problems in computer science can be solved. One famous example in the class is the halting problem and how a computer cannot detect whether it is in an infinite loop or not. It cannot know that it will never stop running. But this class becomes very involved and goes into a lot of depth. Then of course they have technical electives as well, but due to time I'm going to end there with computer science. Now I would say let's move on to computer engineering, which I'll put up here, but the cool thing is we're basically done. These classes are ones that electrical engineers take as well that I explained earlier, and these ones are taken by computer scientists that I already explained. This leaves seriously only one class that computer engineers take which no other major is required to, not counting electives. It's very true that computer engineering is just a combination of electrical engineering and computer science. But again, with all the electives out there, you can tailor your education much more to your liking than you may think. But with that said, I'm going to end that video here. I provided links to everything you saw in the description down below. If you want to support the channel, links are down there as well. Don't forget to follow Major Prep on social media, and I'll see you all in the next video.